Hey guys, so in this video we're going to cover the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, which is part of the urinary system. Now, the first thing to notice is that the liver is going to be secreting angiotensinogen. Now, anytime you see the suffix ogen, that generally means it's the precursor for something that is similarly named, which you'll see is the case. We have angiotensin 1. Now, this system is activated when you have low levels of salt, or low blood pressure, or low ECF volume. Now, how does angiotensin gene get converted to angiotensin 1? Well, the kidney secretes something called renin, and renin gets secreted by granular cells, which can be activated in a number of ways. The first way is that the granular cell themselves have internal bear receptors, which when, detect, when they detect low blood pressure, they secrete the renin. Now, the second way is by the macula densa cells. The macula densa cells are able to detect low uh, amounts of salt in the blood, which then activate the granular cells to secrete renin. Now, lastly, uh, the sympathetic nervous system is able to stimulate those um, the granular cells when the blood pressure falls as well. So the renin converts angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1, and then angiotensin converting enzyme from the lungs, it's not only in the lungs, but it's primarily in the lungs. Uh, it converts angiotensin 1 into angiotensinogen 2. Now angiotensinogen 2 is one of the big players here. So it has a few different effects. The first effect is that it activates vasopressin, or stimulates the release of vasopressin. Now vasopressin, uh, its job is to promote reabsorption by kidney tubules. Now, if you just think about the name vasopressin, you can kind of remember that. Vaso, you think of, um, you know, when you think, think of vessels, and pressin, you think of pressure. So increased reabsorption, um, because our whole goal is to increase blood pressure to make up for the low blood pressure that was detected by the kidney. Now, the next thing it does is it increases thirst, which also results then in increased fluid intake, which, as you can imagine, will help with our arterial blood pressure and ECF volume. The next thing it does is it activates um, arterial vasoconstriction. Now, the arterial vasoconstriction, when that occurs, you have an increase in the total peripheral resistance of the blood. Now, when that happens, you end up having a larger blood pressure. Now, the angiotensinogen also, the angiotensinogen 2, activates the adrenal cortex, which then stimulates the release of aldosterone. Now, the aldosterone goes back and works on the kidney again. So you can see the kidney kind of coming full circle. Now, when the aldosterone works on the kidney, you end up getting increased sodium reabsorption by the kidney tubules, which you can see over here. And when you have that, you end up getting increased uh, chloride reabsorption. And when you have the two of them being conserved, you osmotically retain more water in the ECF. And when you retain more water, it helps correct the low ECF volume. Now, when you have that in conjunction with the, the arterial vasoconstriction and the fluid intake, the three of those increase the volume, which helps make up for the low ECF volume and the low arterial blood pressure. And then because of the aldosterone, you end up making up for the low salt levels. And that is how the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system works. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know below. Thanks.